Welcome to another episode of the Inside Out Perspective. And how often have you heard a Muslim say to you, Christians worship three gods? And how can one plus one plus one equal one? But in truth, no Christian has ever worshipped three gods. And another claim they have, Trinity is not in the Bible. So therefore it must be false. So why do we have this disparity and this incompetence of Muslims out there to understand the term Trinity? So join me on this episode as we have a look at the term Trinity and how it is applied in the Islamic faith. I'm Raymond Douglas, and if you haven't subscribed yet, click the link below. In my discussions with Muslims over the years, I find it very amusing, especially when you have a look at the background of some of the Muslims who, you, who you're talking with. I mean, they're educated people. They're civil engineers, attorneys, um, people who run their own business, who involved in financial affairs, yet they cannot grasp the understanding of the triune God. Triune means three in unity as one. And one of the common claims which Muslims often come up with is that the Trinity is not mentioned in the biblical narrative, therefore it must be false. But on the same side, if we take that same methodology and we have a look at Tawid, the oneness of Allah, Tawid is also not mentioned in the Quran. So, using the same methodology, does that mean Allah is false? Absolutely not. And the reason is, the Trinity and Tawid are theological terms. These are theological terms we've applied to the doctrines and the writings of the two texts to come up with a, a human understanding of what our faith is about. Now, from a Christian perspective, it's very clear that um, Christians worship one God. John 10.30 clearly says this, where Jesus says, I and the Father are one. We can also go back to the Old Testament and we have a look at Exodus 20, where very clearly the first command says, Worship your God, Yahweh, one God. But despite this, Muslims will still say, But you, you worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's one plus one plus one. How do you get to one in that fantastic divine formula? And then another one which Muslims always come off with, if God died, who was running the universe when he was dead? Is that Satan? You know, so these just show me the ignorance and inability for Muslims to understand our faith. If you want to interact with another person's faith, at least take the time to understand the theology behind it. We need to understand when interacting with Muslims, the theology behind the word Tawid, the oneness of Allah although Tawid is also not mentioned in the Quran. The problem with this Islamic logic is that they fail to understand mm -hmm. the divine nature of the Trinity. So when um, we say that Jesus Christ humbled himself and became man in uh, Philippians 2, and he became flesh, uh, 1 John 14, Muslims default with this and rattle because their theology of Tawid says there's only the oneness of God. And they try and force that theology into the biblical narrative. It's very clear in the Quran. It says, do not say three. Um, Surah 7, 141. Uh, Surah 4, 171. Don't say three. Because Allah is one. So in the beginning of all chapters of the Quran, except chapter 9, the repentance chapter, which is the last chapter of Revelation, you have the... Bamila, the attributes of Allah. Two very important ones are. And the first is Al Ramahim. Al Ramahim, the most compassionate. And Al Ramama, which is the most merciful. And we have to add another one to that, which um, comes later in the Quran, where it says Allah is the most loving. That we find in Surah 11 90 and Surah 85 14, where Allah is the most loving. So if we have a look at just these three important names of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, 
and the most loving, I ask the one question. To be loving requires another person. You need to love someone. That's an outward expression. If you want to be compassionate, you need to be compassionate towards another person. If you want to be merciful, you need to be merciful to another person. You cannot be merciful or compassionate on yourself or self-loving. That's just pride. It needs to. All three of these, love, compassion and mercy, are outward expressions. So my questions to Muslims in getting them to understand the Trinity is very simple. Before Allah created Adam, who was he loving? Before Allah created Adam, who was he comp compassionate towards? And before Allah created Adam, who was he merciful towards? And when I ask this question, the cages and the rattling go silent because Muslims fail to answer this. So in reality, if the true God of creation is the first cause of everything, He needed and He has these attributes of loving, compassion and mercy. He needs to be able to express those to another person in eternity past. And if your God is unable to express these emotions of love, mercy and compassion, how could he do that towards his creation? In other words, that means that love, mercy and creation are created items. So therefore, Allah would be created if those are his attributes, his divine eternal attributes. You see the dilemma Islam has. And in grappling with that question, who was Allah loving before He created Adam, requires another person. And that is the essence of the Trinity. Our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit could interact in eternity past within themselves. God the Father can love God the Son, and God the Son can be compassionate to God the Holy Spirit. And that God the Holy Spirit could be merciful to God the Father. That's three divine natures under one umbrella of one Godhead. John 10.30 I and the Father are one. They are one in unity. Try unity. Three in one. So if we're trying to understand this um, theology of Tawid, the oneness of Allah, Allah could not be one in eternity past. Because how? Could he be loving? How could he be compassionate? And how could he be merciful? If he could not offer that internal divine relationship within himself. So Muslims, when you start defining your God, your God of eternity past, please interact with the truth of who he was compassionate with, who he was loving towards in eternity past, and who he was merciful towards in eternity past. And once you've addressed that, you will understand the theology of the Trinity. And I'll leave you with this final question. Which race are you running?